we need to talk about uh, what is probability. So, first I told that understanding question, if you understand question in a very proper way, then you will be able to answer it rightly. How? You have to collect a vocabulary from the question. What question you are having? You have to, from the question itself, you have to collect the vocabulary. What are the words there in that question? And understand those words. In the very first interaction, I had told that if you are having a word, then it is a local thing that locally you have to understand as a concept. It, if whatever word you will have, it is a concept. And that concept is having various meaning, mathematical, simul, uh, or analytical, or numerical, various meanings are there. So you have to understand that. So if question is here, what is probability? So which one is very important word there here in what is probability? Which one is very important? Probability. What is that? Uh, that one is a framework to make a question. So it is very much general thing. Okay. So probability is coming in very specified form. So uh, here uh, in vocabulary we are having single word probability. So we should know oh, meaning of probability. So there are various meaning. One is linguistic, another one is quanti uh, quantitative. That means it is having some numeric approach. So in, if you are coming in mathematics, every word is having numeric meaning or quantitative meaning. So we will talk about what is probability. In one line you can say that it is a measure of randomness. So if you see around anything, if I ask that after having your breakfast, can you find a bus to come here? What would be your answer? Probably. Probably. It is not like that with probability 1 you will say that I will get a bus. With probability 1, when you will be able to say a bus? When you are already on the bus. Then that means experiment, experiment is already done. Then you are saying that. So prediction is when if you see around yourself, every outcome in an experiment happens to be random in nature. You always see something with some probability. It is not deterministic. So there are two kind of things around us, deterministic and random. So except one, that motion of planet, everything would be in deterministic form. Everything would be in deterministic form. Someone is cooking a food. Can you predict that that food would be tasty? And if some expert is coming and cooking a food, can we say that that uh, food would be very tasty or something like that? With probability 1, can you say that? Not all, it is all these. So no activity in around us except motion of planet, deterministic. So uh, no activity around. So every activity except motion of planet, deterministic in nature. No, it's probabilistic in nature. So if probabilistic in nature, the randomness is there. So we need to know how to measure those randomness. We need to know. So in this course, you will learn how to measure the randomness. Uh, that we call it probability. The, may, the quantifying process of randomness, we call it probability. That is the meaning of probability, vocabulary. So first vocabulary, uh, vocabulary might be clear to you. That single word, a vocabulary with single word probability. So you can say that what is probability? Probability is the study of randomness. Uh, randomness is of course everywhere and uh, around us. It touches almost every area of natural sciences, engineering and social sciences. Everywhere it is coming. I can give examples. If you take physics, so in physics quantities are very much common. Like if you talk about temperature, pressure, all these are what? These are originated from random motion of molecules in a substance, something like that, whatever. So what is the origin of uh, temperature, pressure? All these are due to random motion of molecules in the substance. So random molecule, that means uh, randomness is already there. So it is originated from uh, randomness. But people will say that uh, heat equation, wave equation, various kind of things. And those are deterministic kind of things. Partial, we are calling it partial differential equation kind of things. If you, uh, uh, in, a, in a pond, if you throw a stone, then what you observe? Wave will propagate. 
propagate from the point of touch of that stone where if you are throwing that stone and that propagate uh, from the starting and it it go uh, dissipate when it reaches to boundary something like that so that can so that one is wave equation. so you, you can describe that through wave equation those kind of things so those are in uh, macroscopic form those are deterministic those are partial differential equation determination macroscopic that means if you see at large that means if you zoom it out if you zoom it out if you go in microscopic level then those are originated originated from a random motion of molecules if you at micro everyone might anyone is having any issue with um, uh, macroscopic and microscopic word so macroscopic means you something that like collectively i am taking all the student uh, in a single form that i will say that first uh, uh, first semester student that one is macroscopic view but i if i say microscopic that means i have to go in the individual wise i will talk about individual wise that one is microscopic so if you talk about at microscopic level temperature pressures all those are originated from random motion of molecules so random word is there so random so by default if you are willing to uh, uh, study in a very uh, deeper sense probability will come there in order to understand temperature and pressure in a better way so by default in physics it is coming if you talk about biology and medicine also uh, like that so random mutation is coming there like uh, 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 if you mutation have you heard it is just uh, uh, part of process of our, our birth something like that mutation of genes like uh, you may see that uh, a child is having property from parent uh, both uh, parent from father and mother both uh, you will see that uh, why because gene in that child is what it is mutated version of gene in parent gene in parent so mutation is coming so those uh, mutations are always random in nature if you talk about otherwise uh, uh, you may see that in some movies you might have already somewhere you might have seen that someone is willing to uh, want a person who is very good in sports or something like that so they are planning before birth something like that like china is doing chinese uh, people are doing it through food processing and various other kind of things try to change the mutation and uh, so so actually mutation is not very much deterministic it is very much random no one know what is the law behind that no one know only nature nature know nature know so by default randomness is coming there if you talk about uh, uh, random models uh, in like uh, population uh, population dynamics if you talk you see that uh, what is population it is growing and you will say that uh, it is growing exponentially simple if it is growing growing very fast population do you know that the population of world is growing very fast so there are various way to represent the growth of a population one simply say you, you will say that it is exponential in nature it is going like that that way is it like that is it like that exponential in nature if it is exponential ex, exponential in nature nature then definitely there there uh, population will blow up it is not like that so it is not like that x dot equal to x something like that there is one more factor some some something is there to reduce that some kind of competition or intra competition or something like that people fight together and something like that so x into 1 minus x simple x into 1 minus logistic we call it logistic uh, model the simplest model of population you can see like that so there also randomness is coming if you try to see at my microscopic level randomness is there in macroscopic level you will not see randomness but at microscopic level you will see randomness i like epidemic models recently covid everyone might have heard covid so people are trying to model that uh, disease in both framework deterministic and random approach deterministic people uh, actually they are taking at macroscopic level as a differential equation but uh, uh micro at m microscopic level uh, people are coming from probability and uh, statistics they are coming with better model like that you can come up 
and various segment uh, it is coming like that and everyone might be aware of cancer cancer is what kind of disease if you if what cancer is it is just talking about uncontrolled growth of our that tissues and other things what uh, cells yeah uncontrolled growth so there our body is designed in such a way our body are unable to control the growth of those cells tissues it is coming in uncontrolled so our body doesn't know how to uh, control that it is going beyond of that so that one is uncontrolled kind of kind of things so so but uh, till now what kind of uh, uh, remedy is there only you have to cut that segment out of the body so that uh, that uh, we couldn't control the uncontrolled growth of the cells so we take it out of the body so that there would be no effect on other cells like that so again randomness is there people don't don't know so that randomness is there again it is coming so random in nature if you are willing to uh, so up to certain level so if you talk about uh, electrical engineering or in ec you can talk about that very famous thing is noise noise is very much common in communication if you are sending information from one place to another place if uh, uh, then whether information is in very uh, original form or in some other form if someone is sending information from one place to another place what is happening you are sending it in a very original form or in it is never it is encrypted or decry, encryption decryptions are coming otherwise uh, people will decode it and they will uh, g come to know that uh, what message is passing from one place to another place so always if you are having information it is uh, when while in communication it is always in noisy form noisy information is coming there and the person who is sitting in the receiver side that person will denoise it to get information while so that that one is very important. so noise is very important role in the electrical engineering or ec or what in communication simply i would like to say that if you talk about computer science then then if you are implementing an algorithm you will get stuck at some point of time that means your result is not improving so what you have to do you have to randomize the algorithm in, it, in order to make to work the algorithm everyone might be aware of google page rank problem and oh, no, google search engine okay so when that uh, initiated came don't know it came in 1996 by uh, surgery page or another there was another person and it was simple a linear algebra problem from your first model that you are solving ax equal to x ax equal to x system of linear equation you are solving it a is a matrix x is a vector x you are solving x equal to x and that problem was already there in uh, one book hoffman and kunz in 1915 around something like that but no people were able to use that those two people came to formulate that web search ww world wide web problem and first they uh, formulated formulated mini web page and come up with page rank page rank problem page rank problem it is just solving x equal to x and it is just related with uh, equilibrium solution kind of things so simply uh, there is no much uh, uh, what we call it uh, complicated things so that one was in deterministic form but uh, in google search engine you have to make it challenging so so to make it challenging they may, made it randomized randomized page rank problem so that it it would be robust for any challenge so that's way here again randomized again we are putting you then you are bringing probability there to make it robust to work in every situation so again so so there always probability is coming there various in various form probability is coming there in this google search engine and further if you talk about uh, uh, statistics and machine learning uh, most of models would be random in nature then you will s uh, through sentence you will be not able to see how randomness is coming there so if i ask uh, there is a measurement uh, 99.73 using 
100 centimeter scale. Okay. You might be aware of significant figures. So, tell me uh, in the measurement 99.73, uh, which are signif uh, deterministic significant figure uh, which are expected? 99.73. Uh, should I write it here? First question is uh, you have to round it. I will round it. What would you round rounded value of this? Uh, there is no formula, only probability is there to explain all this. So, what would be round? 99 point. Then I will ask why uh, you made 0.7327. Then you will say that there is a rule. The rule. It is not like that. Mathematics is not talking about there is a rule you have to derive it, how it came. You have to give a proper con a concrete approach. Why it is 99.73? So, actually you have taken a 100 meter centimeter scale. So, take it this one is 100. And 10 unit before 100, 90 would be there. And between 90 and 10, how many subdivisions are there? 10. And where would be 0 0.7, 0 0.73? Where would be 0 0.7? Somewhere here, here around 0 0.7. 0 0.7 would be here. And what would be, where would be 0 0.73? In the scale, can you see? Can you see in the scale 100 meters? Uh, 0.73 you can't see. You will simply say that okay, 0 0.73 falls between. Point, point 0.7 and point 0.8. Point 0.8. Okay. What is the average of this one? And what is the expectation of this one? Another name of average is expectation. You can. What is expectation of this one? Point 0.7. So that one is not a correct thing. So what you are started with? Uh, what we can see that better approximation 0 0.73, where it falls, it falls between 0 0.75, okay, 0.75, it falls between 0 This one is 0.75 and 0.65. Point is it is very far away from 0.73. So it falls between 0.73 falls between 0.65 and 0.75. What is the average of 0.65 and 0.75? 0.7. So that's where you have approximated it by. 0.7, so, and you call it 99 deterministic significant figure and 0.77 here you call it expected significant figure, expected. It is coming through some distribution that randomness it is coming. When there is a randomness you take expectation average of that measurement noise. Noise is there, noise is around expectation. Do you know expectation is what? Average. Average is what? Representation of various things in a single form. Various things in a single. Average is representation. So, representing points which falls between 0 0.65 to 0 0.675, uh, those are best represented by 0 0.7. Why? Because it is an average of that under the uniform principle. If you are trying to make uh, something more realistic, then you have to go for better probability law. 
So, probability law is there. So, that is why you are through probability you are doing all these. So, here noise is already there. All uh, simply I would like to say that when you do perform measurement with any measuring device, you come up with a noisy measurement you due to limitation of the device, limitation of device. If you to if you have to make that your measurement better, you have you have to come up with better device. Again, you will face limitation there as well for other other kind of quantity. So always so anyhow, if you perform measurement, always noise is coming. Noise means randomness. So uh, so in statistics, statistics means it deal with data and you try to infer from the data. You do a lot of things. And machine learning is just you are putting that uh, in algorithm framework. In algorithm form, you try to put in algorithm form. So it becomes an algorithm, machine learning algorithm. Everything, there is a method and there is an algorithm. In your algorithm class, you will learn that how to convert a method into algorithm. Algorithm always having a, a, a flow chart. So in I think in your high school or plus two, you might have already studied about uh, some programming language, C or C something like that. So if you are talking about uh, any kind of programming language, C, C happens to be very basic. So you are getting a flow chart. You come up with algorithm, there is a flow chart. So always if there is a method, you have to come up with a flow chart. That means you are converting that method into an algorithm. So that so that is the relation between statistics and machine learning and probability is coming everywhere. So uh, further if you uh, uh, again data is again dealing with uh, measurements. So again by default similar story is coming that noise is coming and you have to noise out that noise as much as possible as per your expertise. How much you understand uh, the probability based on that you will filter out or noise out the noise you, or you will measure the noise. Then you, if you talk about uh, uh, one event, I have taken it here like this. If you talk about, uh, it is not readable, no? Suppose you throw a ball many times exactly with the same angle and same speed under exactly same situation. It is very idealistic, uh, idealistic thing. Every time we run this uh, experiment, the ball will land exactly in the same place where you can predict. Do you know about McGrath, that uh, former Australian, Australian fast bowler? Actually, someone told that uh, he used to throw a ball. If you put, a, he used to put a coin in front of uh, that uh, that a stump, and used to many times he used to put ball on that coin when he was throwing. Uh, while bowling, he used to put uh, some uh, some stories are there. I, I don't know. I haven't seen that, but not every time. So same principle is coming that. So if you have developed in such a way, then if you are uh, throwing a ball, it is falling at the same place every time when it is possible, when you are very much focused, very much focused. If that is possible for a bowler then with every ball that bowler can get a wicket. Is, is it practical? Not practical. So this, uh, in that, if you know every situation, everything in a very right way, proper way, then you are making the system deterministic. Only God can make that. Nature can make that. Nature knows that every law. Are, nature has made that, so no. But if you talk about, uh, uh, even you might be aware of Sachin. Sachin uh, whether uh, he is hitting every ball out of the boundary or something like that? Not. Despite of various stories that he used to focus on uh, that baller uh, at the point when baller is uh, leaving the ball from his hand. That time he is focusing a lot. He, he is very attentive focus, but he, he is not having focus level of that, that so that he can make things deterministic. So for if one baller is balling to Sachin, then again that phenomenon is falling in probabilistic phenomena. That it is not like deterministic. He is having a expertise to quantify the randomness up to certain level. Not with probability 1, with probability 0 0.5, 0 0.6, something like that. So that's where that success he got it like that. Okay. So that is the so uh, around us everything is 
probabilistic in nature it is our approach how correctly we try to how rightly we try to measure the randomness so that that thing so you need to be in very systematic for so a random phenomena, phenomena is one that we can't predict what will come before the experiment is done we can't predict what will come so that is meaning of uh, random experiment or random phenomena we can't predict in prior what will come but if that situation is there then how will able to model that then we can model probabilistic phenomena by going through a suitable uh, systematic probabilistic approach that we can say that only those probabilistic problems are solvable where we can say that what are the possible outcomes if you know what are the possible outcomes then you will be able to solve that probabilistic problem if there is a probabilistic problem where you don't know how many possible outcome what are the uh, outcomes you unable to come up with you can't solve that pro probabilistic problem that approach is there in probability it is not like that every prob probabilistic problem will be solvable only those there you know what are the possible outcome so then so, so one example here i am talking about if you are taking a coin and if you flip a coin then what are the possible outcome head or tail so you know the uh, only these are the possible outcome head or tail so it is a solvable problem you can come up with a measure of probability when you are flipping a coin what will be probability of getting head 0.5 if coin is unbiased coin or very nice coin or point uh, probability of getting tail 0.5 uh, then you will say that uh, in cricket match you uh, used to see that uh, one captain always used to win the toss is it like that that coin is a biased coin like uh, in world cup and in, in, uh, any match you might have already seen that one captain is always mostly mostly wi winning the coin so from there can you conclude that that coin is a bias or unbiased coin can you conclude that no then what you have to do that when you will conclude that that coin is bias or unbiased so if you toss that coin sufficient number of times like uh, more than 50s 100 something like that and in that case you observe that uh, appro appro uh, getting head you can call probability of success getting tail you can call probability of failure so in that case uh, generally probability of success we denote it by p if uh, that in that case if you are tossing coin 100 times or uh, 200 times and in that case approximated value that uh, empirical value of that p that one is coming around uh, point definitely that will come around 0.5 that will so that principle we call it law of large number L law of large number that will be covered in statistics that is part of okay that is part of statistic so then you can say that at, at the just uh, with few number of trials you can't judge that that coin is a bias or unbiased okay so for that approach you have to develop a probabilistic modeling approach okay so there are actually someone will say that uh, actually no if i ask what is the definition of probability of an event then you will come up, come up with this empirical definition you are saying that probability of an event uh, e it happens to be ratio fraction this fraction number of outcome in an event e divided by all possible outcome generally you had you might have seen this definition but this definition is not always working so that's why we say that it is pit, pitfalls of empirical approach it is not always working it is working in case of discrete probability and if finiteness is there finite number of outcome possible outcome are there then only it is true otherwise it will be not true in every case you will see various situation various solutions if you come up with this empirical formula then you will come up with various uh, probability of an event a single event and you will be confused a lot if you are taking this event so no one word in this lecture we will not take this definition directly we will we will come up with this, this definition uh, definition for the case when we are talking about discrete probability when sample space is discrete and finite then we will get this kind of thing. it is only true in that case and kolmogorov has given very, very interesting kind of thing so just one example i have taken if you suppose you flip uh, 
two coins then and uh, you, uh, you have been asked that what is the probability that we obtain one head and one tail. Remember that read the sentence one head and one tail and it is talking about joint occurrence of head and tail. Okay. So that those words also you have to fix it and just for uh, 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 that uh, what are the drawback of this definition I am saying that. So here from there probability would be 1 by 2 probability of this event this is the event this is the event. Is it visible? Not visible. Okay. This is the event. One head and one tail. And you got the probability one by two. Uh, later, right now, don't worry about the computation. And there is a, another approach, D. Lambert. It is counting number of distinct kind of outcomes among the distinct outcomes. As per D. Lambert, there are three types of uh, outcomes. If you are tossing two coins together, head, head. Head tail, tail tail. Distinct. See, it is his approach was different. Definitely, he, he was in the wrong approach. And based on his approach, the probability is coming one by three. So that one is a wrong approach through empirical approach. Just don't take it serious like that. Just for understanding purpose. See how empirical. Uh, later, later when we go in continuous continuous uh, probability, you will see the pitfall like that. Uh, if you are uh, everyone might be aware of that game. That game. Uh, that if you apply this formula there in dart game, how many what is the how many points you observe in the dart? 1.2.3 point, point, it is not finite, infinite points. So in denominator, number of all, all possible outcome it is coming. So in finite point, if you put in denominator, what will happen? It will lead towards zero. Lead towards zero. Okay. So, so what I would like to say that. Probability is just not common sense, it is something more than common sense. That common, something more is coming from Kolmogoro approach. Okay. So the basic principle of probability are little more than common sense. And uh, we have to come up with a uh, very interesting kind of or very uh, structure formulation. And that one is coming from Kolmogoro. Kolmogoro approach, uh, he refined the probability model in three terms. There he is developing a model in such a way it is having three concepts. First one is, uh, first basic concept is sample space. Everyone might be aware of that, but you don't know who come up with that idea. The first concept or first ingredient is you have to come up with sample space. You have to, so it is not like that blindly you will come up with sample space. So while computing sample space, you need to know what is the I way of identifying a general outcome in a random experiment. General outcome. Once you are able to get a form of general outcome, then list out all possible outcome. And that list of all possible outcome becomes sample space. So you need to know the first basic concept, sample space, how to compute sample space of a random experiment. That second basic con concept would be event. That, that means if you are having a problem, there would be something using a statement. Some a specification would be there. Do you know what is meaning of a statement? What is meaning of a statement? In truth table, what are the values of a statement? In truth table, a statement, it is not a question kind of thing. A statement is having uh, two possible value, either it is true or false. So that is the same it is coming from English uh, grammar. So it is having two value, either it is true or false. So like that. So uh, talk about a statement. So if you are willing to define a, an event, you have to come up with and you have to see or you have to find a statement in the given question. That a statement will lead towards a event or identification of event. So you have to identify the event. Once you identify the sample space and event, then you can compute probability measure of that event. So three, third, third one is the probability measure. And there in the probability measure, uh, a lot of things you have to do. You have to come up with some kind of probability law in order to compute like that. Okay. If in between, if you are having any question, any doubt, uh, if you are willing to ask, you can raise your question.
if you don't understand i am always uh, here to answer your doubt and question and whatever problem further problem you are having you can put there in classroom if you are able to ask here but develop the habit of asking question how many of you are aware of quora raise hand even don't uh, one thing i am asking don't afraid of uh, uh, raising head or something so i am not seeing uh, i think uh, many of uh, just uh, drop down uh, many of uh, actually uh, uh, still i unable to see that uh, many people uh, don't know about quora i never heard quora now you are in technical institute so just have to know those things so don't go to quora don't i want to suggest to visit quora Quora is also a platform there you will get answer of many things. Okay, one kind of things. Uh, queries, it solves queries, but not in a better way. What is the best way to get answer of your query? Anyone, huh? Anyone of you have heard a stack exchange? Anyone, a stack exchange? Okay, one, two, very nice. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven. very few i i, I see uh, if you are really very uh, much interesting in learning and uh, getting answer of your questions of technical things technical terms go and make your account in quora no sorry a stack exchange sorry a stack exchange in a stack exchange uh, there are various uh, part like mathematics statistics data science ec dsp or communication various whatever courses you will see there is a dedicated segment for that and you can join any of that and one more benefit you will get it that if your points would be very good there in that you will get very interesting job in very interesting company you know that what are the interesting company what uh, google might be Uh, everyone might be thinking about google something like that but if you go and make your account there and you are getting very good points here yes? a stack exchange see yes, a stack exchange s t a c k exchange e x c h a n g e stack exchange so make account there and really you will one more thing i would like to warn or suggest like that if you are asking a question and it is not uh, asked properly your question will be closed if you don't know how to ask a question your question will be closed but you will see that what does it reflect that whatever questions there in stack exchange all are rightly question and all are rightly answered if your answer is also not uh, meaningful they will close your answer and who will close the person who are having very good points they are doing it. they are getting authority it is not like that there is a uh, manager who is managing all those things it is not like that you will be a manager if you are having very good points there like that so there right question and right answer you will get it like so uh, here developed the habit of asking question and if you don't know how to ask question related field just write like regarding probability probability plus a stack exchange and if you are uh, willing to ask question what is probability plus a stack exchange that searching technique everyone might be aware of that go google and write that and you will get it like that you you will get it it will lead toward that and you will get uh, very right question and keep uh, keep on uh, keep on shooting that question in classroom or in a stay, google classroom something like that so it will give better learning approach to understand a course if you are following that kind so everyone try to make account there in a stack exchange and uh, for mathematics uh, there are various mathematics and other kind of data science there is a stack exchange there is a also co everyone might be aware of uh, that uh, pe now people are uh, in technology people are very much fascinated of uh, fasc uh, coding kind of things so for that there is a, a stack overflow name is a stack overflow so for that if you are facing any kind of things so most of answer are coming from that like that so you can get you can make account so it would be really very interesting kind of things okay 
so i would like to say that uh, goal of this course uh, i think uh, here uh, you will be if, if uh, uh, i am very much uh, friendly to listen your questions and to answer your question and uh, feel free to ask questions related to uh, related to any concept okay and here we will develop mathematical foundation of probability how to and probability i had told that it is measure of randomness so how will measure the randomness mathematically okay so the goal of the course is to teach how to reason precisely with random or about randomness we have to come up with precise means the best possible measure of randomness best possible measure of random in any situation okay and uh, how to think in a probabilistic manner you have to think you have to develop thinking in a probabilistic manner so that you won't commit mistake in solving a probabilistic problem you have to think in a probabilistic way we haven't defined probability in term of frequency so we will not define probability in term of empirical formula that uh, number of element in uh, e event uh, divided by number of all possible outcomes so that formula just forget uh, leave it there in high school okay we will come up, uh, at some place you will you will get a match of that but the matching process would be different so leave it there high school okay and uh, so i will start with uh, the basic uh, concept of probability okay making a lot of sound so first one is uh, that you need to talk about randomness it is not i am saying that uh, uh, basic concept because the random experiment is our problem it is an experiment where we can't predict output outcome what would be outcome we don't know once a random experiments is already occurred then after seeing oh, uh, after tossing a coin head appears then we say head okay so we in prior we can't predict what would be the outcome but we in random experiment we can say that what are the possible outcomes that that uh, uh, freedom we are having we can list out all possible outcome what are the possible outcome if you are not able to say what are the possible outcome then simply say that we will be not able to model that problem that probabilistic problem okay so for example same example it is coming here so so uh, here the first basic concept is sample space it is talking about yes no, not audible okay sometime it's shifting <laughs> Uh, let me know if you are facing any problem so first uh, the basic concept of uh, probabilistic modeling is sample space in the definition way you can say that it is collection of all possible outcome all possible outcome what you are saying it okay so how you come up with sample space in two steps first step it is talking about you have to identify a general outcome in the experiment and in the second step you have to list out all possible outcome and then once you will be able to list out all possible outcome you got the simplest space so it is a two step it is not one step kind of things okay always remember that it is two step concept to compute simplest space so one example i will take it here so simplest space uh, uh, in the set theory form you can write it or oh, capital omega is denoted by simplest space is denoted by capital omega and uh, an outcome is denoted by a small omega a small omega so that one is a, uh, coming in a trial of a random experiments so a small omega is element so it is same format from your high school set theory so element is denoted by uh, small letter and the set is denoted by capital letter okay one example if you flip a coin then it will either come up head or tails so coming up head you denote it by h coming up tail you denote it by tail so your sample is so h and tail that one is identification of our outcome okay and uh, if you list out then what are the outcome head or tail so that's where you got sample space that one is containing head comma tail it says so please so it is a very simple example we will take little little bit uh, complicated maybe everyone might be aware of dice so how many faces dice six faces but if you read the or if you watch lectures from mit ocw by john sitiskis actually he is always dealing with four four sided dice 
in most of example he is dealing with phone so also you have to be used to of that whether you are visualizing or not like that so generally regular dice is having six faces but uh, nothing is mentioned there now then you always proceed with six side six sided dice if uh, it is four sided dice it must be mentioned there okay dice means so so here just two dice that means it is nothing is mentioned so it is a six sided dice so that one is regular that we had already seen that i will talk from indian perspective okay so consider the random experiment of throwing uh, one red dice and a uh, one blue dice and end option is there and joint occurrence jointly we are throwing two dice and means jointly we are throwing two dice now then how will identify an outcome we will identify outcome here it would be an order pair i comma j i is talking about occurrence of face in the first dice and j is talking about occurrence of face in the second dice so through and these are occurring jointly so uh, so what is the form of outcome out for outcome of yes any question okay uh, what is the form of outcome it is i comma j it is order pair i comma j okay so you have already seen the form of outcome someone is saying that uh, someone is saying that uh, someone name uh, one a student they say like mark okay someone is saying mark then what you will assume from there you have to identify mark is what whether it is a person or a line or what or point or something like that whatever you have to identify that now so if you are in the society society someone is calling mark then how you will identify mark as a person if you uh, within people then you will uh, identify as a person if uh, you went to measure something somewhere like in uh, geography class something like that and you are drawing lines or there is someone is uh, just uh, uh, taking a word uh, saying that mark then there what you will say that you got a place and you have to mark there so there mark is a point coordinate there so identification of outcome is very much essential that there i mark is identified as a point but when you are within people mark is identified as a person so that identification that that is the identification approach first you identify object in the random experiment then list out all possible outcome then we once you so here the object the outcome is identified as i comma j order that name is order pair order is that i means dealing with first dice and j is dealing with second dice so order is very much essential it is not like that you will write j comma i something like that then j you have to specify that j is what and y is so you have to make a meaning of that so that one is the identification of an outcome so once you are able to identify an outcome then you will list you have to list out all possible outcome so we are listing out all possible outcome i comma j so that i is taking value 1 2 3 4 5 up to 6 and j is taking value 1 2 3 4 5 up to 6 integers these are integers and taking value 1 2 6 so how many uh, outcomes would be there 36 you can list out uh, all the make a box like this a table make a table like this and you can fix all these uh, outcomes you can list out okay you can do all these things okay like fill up all these through exercise you can do all this so total outcomes are 36 now take another example everyone might be taking bus uh, at least uh, a student who are staying in sana hostel they might be taking so talk about uh, experiment of waiting time for a bus but, but you people are, have been already assigned a bus suppose you miss the bus so what you have to do you have to there what is the nearest uh, bus stop santiniketan there you have to wait there is a bus stop you have to wait there and that uh, what kind of random experiment there waiting time for a bus you have to wait it is not like that uh, always you will get bus uh, once you arrive there in the bus stop sometime it may possible sometime you have to wait so so waiting time for a bus it is a 
random experiment and what is the out what is an outcome it is a in the form of time time and t t equal suppose you at uh, first day when you missed bus you went there at the bus stop you got bus in 10 minutes after waiting 10 minutes you got a bus t equal to 10 t equal to 10 is an outcome an outcome then you went there there is a strike of bus what will happen you want to get work you have to that day that day so uh, so you have to list out all possible scenario so in that case what are the possible scenario all possible waiting time would be included in sample space you have to list out all possible center sample space so now sample space is for waiting time is what 0 to infinity infinity is a number or not how many of you think that infinity is a number anyone is thinking that infinity is a number no and then right infinity is a symbol and that symbol of very big symbol of very big simply like that so it is like that always we live in a finite domain and we can't approach to infinity it will be very big it is beyond of our scope like that so here sample space is semi closed interval 0 to infinity so for waiting time for us so here all problem i am talking about computation of sample space so now onward what would be your approach blindly not directly write, write sample space you have to first identify an outcome then list out all possible outcomes then you will get sample space any doubt any question here so what would be your approach of uh, computing sample space it is one step or two step develop the habit of two step not one step and if you are really willing to understand mathematics this pa this part of mathematics probability then you have to be very systematic it is not like that don't go for ad hoc approach that listing out all possible outcome blindly that one is ad hoc approach be make make it systematic identify an outcome and list out uh, i will give complicated problem as well it is not like that but if you are going through this approach you will easily come up with sample space very fast if you are following all those it is not like that always sample space is uh, made from a single quantity if you if you talk everyone might be aware of that uh, if you take uh, uh, atom then initially people were saying that atom, atom is the uh, smallest part of any substance something like that but uh, later rather for other kind of things uh, many uh, people uh, they come up with that no inside uh, atom there is a nucleus and with inside nucleus there is a proton and neutron and electron is circulating around the nucleus okay so atom was no more the smallest things what it it had further subdivision electron proton and neutron so like that if you say the outcome is not is the smallest unit outcome is in that scenario in the random experiment it is the way to proceed to compute randomness but outcome may be made from fine ingredients Vesic, uh, very various physical kind of thing physical quantities or something like some entity something like that so outcome is also made from various things as per random experiment as per requirement like in the last case in tossing uh, uh, throwing two dice how was outcome made it was made from outcome uh, from numbers appears in the first dice and numbers appears in the second dice. so it is not like that directly it came it made from two things from first dice and second dice uh, faces on the first dice and faces so that kind of thing so some sometime it would be composite in nature in uh, th uh, tossing a uh, uh, tossing a coin outcome was just as it is, it is coming. Uh, it, it, it was very easy to identify in single form. Uh, it was not composite form, but in dice it was in composite form and you can make further, further things. Okay. Sample, sample, so as I told that sample space uh, as the first basic concept, we will take few more example. So one is uh, that uh, uh, movement of uh, a bee. A bee is uh, buzzing around us. Everyone might be aware of uh, bee. 
okay honey bee or something like that or mosquito and various other kind of things you can all are falling in the same category so if you track its flight uh, flight trajectory for 5 seconds then what would be trajectory what would be trajectory if you are observing a bee for 5 seconds what would be the trajectory mathematically say what would be trajectory what it would be random in nature but I am saying that like Mark was a person within uh, uh, the population, what, what is the trajectory, the flight of a B? What is uh, in term of mathematics? What? What the para parabola? Uh, rightly, you are in right direction. Actually, not always, parabola. no one can say that. It is a function. It is a continuous function from interval 0, 5 to R3. It is a function or map, you can say that. So, it is not like that B is uh, uh, flying like in through jump. Frog can have jumping. Frog, what is the movement of frog? It is jumping. So, if you are willing to model uh, the motion of frog, you will get difference equation. Difference, uh, some kind of sequence kind. Sequence, just sequence you are saying that. Don't go different. Sequence, everyone might be aware of that. So, sequence. But if you observe the motion of uh, B, it is a continuous function. And what kind of continuous function? From time domain interval 0 to 5 to R3 in a space. It is moving in a space. So, it is a continuous function. So, one outcome is a continuous function, omega. Omega is a continuous function from 0, 5 to R3. So, you are getting a path like that. Uh, one path, there are various names, function path, path is very, uh, trajectory path, other kind of things. So, that path is very zigzag in nature. It is not like that uh, uh, it is taking parabolic or cubic or something like that. They are not uh, nicely trained, okay. They are having random movement. So, one one observation, through one observation for 5 minutes, you come up with this kind of path. Yep. But it is a continuous function, continuous function of time. It is a continuous function of time. Then what you will do? What would be the once you are able to identify outcome of an experiment in the in the experiment of observation where you are observing motion of B, then an outcome is a map, a function or path like this. Then you have to list out all possible outcome. What is meaning of all possible outcome? It is function omega, where omega is a function from interval 0 to 5 to R3, all possible continuous function, do not include discontinuous function because they do not have jump kind of thing, they are not frogs, okay. Yes? R3 means uh, Cartesian product, everyone might be aware of, R3 means R cross R cross R, three times we have taken cross. So, that one is notation of a space. So, if you are having line, it is, you denote it by R. If you are having a plane, how many direction plane is having? Two direction. So, R cross R, Cartesian product R cross R, so R2. And in 3D, R cross R cross R, 3. So, 3D, we are able to visualize up to 3D. Uh, if you are Einstein level a student, you can visualize 4D as well. R4. Time was the fourth coordinate. So, this is, this is collection of all possible continuous functions from the interval. So, this is the sample space how you can identify like that. So, I think first job is done to every, I, it is job to identify first basic concept that competition of sample space. Any issue, anyone is having? How many steps are there to compute a sample space? Two. Always just, uh, I am not asking to memorize it, I am asking to understand it. So, there always there are two steps to identify outcome uh, sample space. Okay. Next job is our next concept, basic concept of probability modeling is event, and it is also you can call it second ingredient or second basic concept. Various things you can call it. So once we have identified all possible outcome of an experiment, we should make some a specification by using some kind of a statement or some kind of question also 
actually question in very generic way, question is not like asking question, question it is coming not in question form, it is coming question, you are raising question is like that way, it is there is a statement and the outcome of that experiment is satisfying that a statement or not, question is like that, there is a statement, okay, a statement will come and you are asking question uh, from yourself whether if you get an outcome, an outcome from the experiment and you are asking question uh, yourself whether that outcome is satisfying that statement or not. So, question is asked in that framework, okay. Are you getting meaning of this or not? So, a statement is very much important. So, you come up with a sample space, then you come up with a, a statement and through a statement you are asking question to whom? to outcome, you are saying that outcome is satisfying that a statement or not. Uh, if it is not satisfying in that a statement, then it will be not in that event. If it is satisfying that a statement, then it will be in that event. So, that situation is there. So, I will take uh, exa example here. So, what situation is coming there? Like uh, if you toss two dice together and you come up with a statement like sum of number on the dice is 7, sum, sum of number on the dice that you are throwing two dice together, remember that your general outcome is i comma j, okay. And there you come up with a statement, sum of the number on the dice is 7. Is it a statement or not? It is having either T or F, truth table value true T or F, it would be either true or false. So, uh, what are the elements which are satisfying this statement? In the, what are the outcome in the sample space which are satisfying this one? Like if you take 1 1, 1 1 is satisfying omega equal to 1 1, it is satisfying? No. So, it will be omega, 1 1 would be not there in the event, 1 2 would be not there, 1 3 would be not, 1 4 would be not, 1 six, one 5 would be not, 1 6, yeah, it would be there. So, that is why 1 6 is satisfying the given a statement, that is why it is coming in the event. 2 5 is also satisfying the statement that sum of the numbers on the dice is 7, so that is why it is coming. And like 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, 6, 1. Others are not satisfying. So, that is why those are not in the event. So, it is a question you are asking to outcome whether you are satisfying this event or not. If it is not satisfying, you will not put it in the event. If you are satisfying, you will put in the event. So, that is the question. Are you getting meaning of question or, the, or not? So, a statement is very much important here. So, same thing at least it is not arranged in a proper way I think. So, and also you, you have to recall the previous things that sample space you had already seen that. So, some yes, event is always a subset of always a subset of sample space only that condition or one more. There are two conditions here for event, what are condition? Event is a, it is a subset of sample space and second it is satisfying a statement. So, again it is a two a, a step is a quantity. Uh, first one is it is a subset and second one subset notation is like this way and second one a statement, it must satisfy some a statement. And if you are willing to, someone is very much interested to uh, go deep inside the math, then there is a Borel set and sigma set, sigma field or so some sigma algebra or Borel algebra kind of things are coming. I won't discuss that right now. That one is major theoretic approach. So sigma algebra. So sigma algebra is all about that these two step combination. That when you are taking subset condition and uh, that a statement satisfying a statement condition, both you are talking together, those are making members of sigma algebra of the corresponding sample space. So, a statement that one is also having uh, very practical or computational things, but people are making that uh, 
uh, what we call it very abstract. What is meaning of abstract? Abstract, what is meaning of abstract? Something that uh, happening in mind we are unable to visualize. So, abstract is going. Have you seen numbers in physical form? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All these numbers are abstracts. Someone will say that, okay, this number it is coming as we are saying that 1. Where is the proof that it is 1? Abstractly, we have given notation this one is 1, so that our computation would be much simpler like that. So, those numbers always coming in abstract form, it is not like that. Someone will say that uh, if there is a cow, then we will say that uh, it is there is a cow or there is a uh, snack uh, or something like that, uh, there is a food or something like that, then we can say that uh, it is a food, all these are having form. Um, but if you are saying that uh, numbers, uh, those abstractly they came and they become part of computation, that very important part of competition, it is coming like that. So, abstract it came something, it, it is happening at uh, mind level. So, you can mention it a statement, second one is it must satisfy the event we generally denoted by E, it must satisfy two uh, things that we come across, first subset of sample space, second a statement. Then I will come up with uh, another example uh, like that uh, again waiting time. Waiting time, if you go for waiting time, then suppose you are putting a statement, the bus come within first hour. Like that uh, 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 you are actually you miss the bus and you are willing to come here in this campus. Uh, suppose it is Saturday, in Saturday there would be no class generally, generally there would be no class, in a special situation you will have class. So, no class. So, uh, you want you can do at your hostel or here as well and what is what is happening you can come up with a statement suppose i get bus in first one hour then i will go to this campus otherwise i will come back to my hostel and read there and whatever you want to do for that so that kind of a statement can come so that a statement in the waiting time it is defining a event it is defining an event so various kind another people may say that no i will wait for 2 minutes so uh, two two hour, then that event would be different, and likewise depends upon uh, people's approach how you can come up with. So uh, that's why you can you, you can come with, come up with various uh, a statement in order to define event. So what is important here in defining event? What is important? A statement. You have to look a statement what is the statement and you have to find what are the outcome those satisfying the given statement. Then you will get event as a set uh, as a subset of sample space. So, very much important that you have to follow all those things. It is not like that directly you co will come up with uh, as a subset of sample space, not. Every subset of sample space is not a not an event. Every remember that in finite probability, every subset of sample space would be a event. But if you go in finite kind of things, you will face problem. So remember that in general, every subset of a sample space may not be an event. Only those subset which are satisfying an event, uh, sorry, event, satisfying an a statement will be a an event. So, that uh, any question till now? Anyone is just you are free to ask. I told that one platform there you can get a lot of questions. You can raise this, those questions as well. So, and uh, just uh, this I have uh, written in addition that when you are defining a s s uh, event, also you should know what are the all possible outcomes so that you can enlarge the event as per, as per your approach. Okay. The next concept is probability measure and uh, I think we do not have uh, classes up to 12.15 and today I have to take attendance as well. 
but I haven't uh, okay so in next class I will discuss about probability measure. So for that uh,